We are 10 persons from Grenland Sea Kayak Club who paddle the coast of Bohus Lane in Sweden, southbound from Lystekil. On day three of our week-long trip, we have arrived at the lovely island of Valdere and chose this as a campsite for a couple of days and went paddling around the surrounding islands. Det sitter en ensom gråsprint igjen på den ytterste nakne ø. Jeg bruker spesielt å kikke på fugl da, men det er jo savla moro på en sånn tur. Det er jo sånn du har i... Lange flate baller.
We have now arrived at the island Store Harmanö, and this is a national park, and he is not allowed to camp overnight in tent. Och här heter det Hammare huvud. Hermanö. Hermanö, ja. Hermanö naturreservat. Och på norren ligger Guldholmen. Vi paddlade igenom igår. Jag paddlade igår, ja. Ja, det är Svein som sitter till vänster. Så är det Björn Åge till höger vid Varden.
Titta hit du. Titta hit du. Jag så fina reflexer in i den solögon. Ja, ja. Gla glasögon men. Ja, ja, det är blöje. Ja, ska vi se om vi... Ja. Mycket grejer. Ja. Där fick ni gillet snitt. Där, ja. <laughs> This island has a year-round boat route that connects it with the mainland and surrounding islands. The ferry takes 40 minutes from Tuvesvik on Orust to Kerrigan. The ferries leave every one to one and a half hours all through the year. Kerrigan is a small and cozy island with about 80 year-round residents, hundreds of part-time residents and about 1500 who live there more or less all summer. The island also receives many guests who use hotels and hostels or just come for day visits. It's a lively and vital little community and there are around 25 businesses and many associations for both residents and holidaymakers. Och där kom dräggen.
stötta på ja. We found a cozy little restaurant where we had pancakes for lunch. The old lighthouse on Moserschär is a Heidenstam lighthouse. It got its name from the designer Gustav von Heidenstam, who in addition to constructing lighthouses also had the task of developing a lighthouse system along the Swedish coast. The lighthouse was built in 1865 and lit on October 9th the same year. 
a lighthouse residential building today houses three apartments, a conference room and an attic room. The lighthouse also includes a tool shed, food cellar, a sauna, a laundry room, a kerosene shed, a machine house and a lighthouse museum. The first fog signal was a gong held in the hand and the sound of which could be heard a few hundred meters. In 1873, the lighthouse was equipped with two cannons of Arsling's model. A shot with an 800 gram gunpowder charge was fired every 15 minutes. In 1885, the siren for steam was arranged. In 1916, steam was exchanged for engine power, which was renewed and strengthened shortly after. In 1887, the lighthouse was changed from solid red to white lightning. There is also a smaller harbor with space for some smaller boats and a couple of boathouses. The lighthouse consists of an iron pipe that is fixed up by cross beams and wires. The lighthouse is painted in red and white. The lighthouse is 21.7 meters high. A four wire lamp peak of kerosene was fitted into the moderator lamp in 1884. The lighthouse then shone with a solid red light visible at 12 nautical miles. In 1887, the lamp was replaced with a three spoke kerosene lamp. The current lighthouse, fully automatic, is a white, about 13 meter high plastic tower, at the top equipped with red square day marks. The children in the lighthouse families were initially educated on carrying on, but daily transport there became demanding, so in 1881 the first teacher was hired. One of them, Blenda Johansson, moved to Moserschar in 1808 at the age of 22. Every autumn until 1912, she taught the pilot children in a room in the attic. The teachers had to be unmarried. They worked at different lighthouse sites and stayed a few months at each. Blenda was also stationed at, among others, Klöveshaar and Pater In 1913, she met her husband at, at Vedrun and thus ended her teaching career. At most, six children were taught at the same time in a school. Eventually, the children were instead discharged on the mainland or Kjerringøen and had to come home to their parents during the holidays. Gradually, the mothers moved along and the lighthouse staff had to live without their families and instead visit them when the opportunity arose. In 1917, the pilot children received their last education on the island. <laughs>